All right, I've got a oh an email or two here and there, past, present. Uh, a few questions about lighters and lighter repair, and, and uh, I don't, you know, I haven't worked on a bunch of lighters like these repair centers have, but uh, I can probably give you a little advice as far as what I've worked on. Uh, I have, let's see, the first lighter that I ever bought that I worked on was a Dunhill roll of gas, okay? That was an eye-opener. Uh, you know, those things were, uh, you know, the toughest part about a Dunhill roll of gas, and let me, let me up here, here. I got a paper here. I got a, I got a repair diagram here, all right? So... Um, this item that you see right here is called a Flynn housing, okay? These get a crack in them. All right, now, if you get a crack in yours and you need to get it replaced, you're going to have to either buy another lighter or maybe someone uh, will sell one. I think the last one I bought was... Oh, I'm, I'm thinking it was around $20. I think they're up to 30 now. Okay, so that's the expensive part. Anything you get for Dunhill roll gas is going to be an expensive part. That's why a lot of people, they buy extra lighters for parts. It's just cheaper to buy the whole lighter. Uh, and another, this platform here sits on top of the base here, okay? And you got these two screws. It shows right here that, that uh, hold that platform down. Now these screws, you're not going to find them anywhere unless somebody's got them for sale or you buy another lighter. And they have been known to break off when you're trying to get them out. If they break off and you're trying to get them out, well, you're going to have fun, okay? Uh, you know, I don't worry about rollers and stuff like that. Uh, if these things, if you get a lighter, any lighter, let's say, for instance, if you got a flint lighter, and your spring's good, and your rollers, you, you know, your spring's good, and your flint's good, you got a new flint, and, it's, and it seems to be sparking all right, but you can't get it lit, then you need to, you probably need to re-harden your wheel. That does happen. Take that thing out, that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a Zippo lighter, or any lighter. If this thing gets hot enough over a period of time, it'll take the temper out of it, and to fix it, Put it on something, heat it up till it's glowing a red hot orange, and it's and to put a magnet around it where it doesn't, it's not magnetized. And when you get it to that point, drop it in cold water and it's rehardened. Okay. Uh, another. Let's see. As far as these, these here, I've never had to rebuild these stoppers. These stoppers go up in the lid. All they basically do is this here is what I call a burner valve. And you see the top part right here is a little thinner. All this uh, plunger does right here is just push down on this. Because uh, inside this here long burner valve is another little burner that's got a little plunger on the inside of it, which is spring-loaded. And, uh, and uh, it plugs up the uh, hole, the little hole that's at the bottom of this, uh, from letting gas protrude through. Okay. Um, okay, here, here's another thing too, the main fill valve. If you get a bad fill valve, these aren't rebuildable. I mean, they probably are, but you're going to have to cut this and maybe solder something back on. The best thing I can tell you is there's a guy out of, a, I think it's a UK or somewhere over there, that he sells, this type of valve here will actually work in a Ronson lighter and there's Ronson rebuild parts you can look on eBay and he'll sell the outer part and the inner part I think it's type B but these also work in Dunhills and this cap to your filler cap uh, will also fit in these newer valves okay and another thing too these little bitty springs down here I had to order some from no, oh, I can't remember where it was, Japan or China or something. They're like $5 a pop. It might be more expensive now. 
and if you unscrew this to pull out that and you lose that little spring it's the lighter still going to work but it's going to screw up your flame adjustment okay uh and let me tell you something these are quality lighters don't get me wrong but uh you know after rebuilding several different brands of lighters i've just decided that uh i stay away from these okay there's other quality lighters out there that are easier to work on and the little uh seat inside this needle valve in here is freaking tiny all right really tiny all right but they ain't saying that everybody buys them fixes them most guys that collect these fix them okay so if you're buying one to have somebody fix and you're probably going to pay ars light repair out of his in north carolina 125 dollars fix your roll of gas okay all right here this is a exploded diagram of an old boy all right now the old boy is a simple lighter but it's a quality built lighter okay and japanese engineering is always second to none um it just uh you know doesn't have the fancy name it doesn't have uh you know dunhill on it or DuPont or or whatever name you want to put on a expensive lighter. Just because lighter's expensive, guys, doesn't mean it's a, it's worth the money. Okay, you know, I mean, it's just marketing, and you know, people that's got more money than uh, than they know what to do with, so they can uh, play the uh, look what I got game. I call it. But anyway, uh, this number twelve right here. This is the main stopper valve right here. It goes up into your burner. This is your burner. This is the one when you un, uh, when you pop this top up here. That's what you're going to see. It's got the hole inside of it, okay? This is the stopper valve. And the stopper that valve goes down, and inside the lighter here, there's a little bitty hole in here. This whole valve soldered into this system, okay? And this is the stopper eventually these are made out of rubber they need replaced okay it's really simple now uh, let me show you here's a diagram that shows the uh, burner valve from a Dunhill roll of gas okay this is what you see coming out of the top of the lighter now you don't see the little the little one that comes out of this because they got it pulled down this way and they're showing it to you. Uh, uh, when I showed you, uh, let me go back to this real quick here. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to be referring on this diagram here, this part here, okay, and this little cap right here. You see the little top right here. The needle is already up and it's poking through. There's an inner needle and an outer casing. Okay? This takes an O-ring on. That's what that is right there. Now let's get back to this. All right. All right. Now here it is with this bottom valve piece removed, showing the spring that fits over this. And this is the stopper, right? This little black thing on the end. Is This is the stopper. That goes up, that uh, stops the little hole here from having the gas come through. And, go, and what happens is when the gas, when this valve's up, the gas comes through, goes through a little, it, it goes through a little hole, it just protrudes all the way up the side of these two valves and, and comes out in between uh, the two valves here. But uh, I'm going to show you, what I'm going to show you now is why I, I really, these lighters aren't made to, to uh, just leave on and leave on, you know, because this this uh, valve area here will get hot over a period of time, and you're dealing with an, uh, a stopper that's one millimeter wide and a half millimeter thick, okay? So bear that in mind. Okay, here's what we got here, guys. What you see here are two stoppers. You see this one right here? 
This is the size I cut this because I still got some of that old, some of that old uh, O-ring cord in there. This is the size of that stopper in a Dunhill roll gas. And this is the size of your stopper in a, in a I am Corona old boy. Now, if your burner gets a lot of heat, you stand a good chance of vulcanizing this rubber here, which is going to make it hard and it's going to, and it's going to leak. You got a lot more rubber here, guys. It's going to take a lot more heat. A lot more heat. So that's why myself, um, I love Dunhill Roll gases. You know, I sold, uh, but they're expensive. I had two Dunhill Roll gas pipe lighters, and I got $350 a piece out of both of them, and they was perfect. And I'll tell you what, the people that bought them, they was happy. I mean, extremely happy. But for $350, people, uh, I would get me multiple lighters. I would get me a... Mm, I'd get me something like a, uh, well, I'd actually get me a Flint operated lighter, like an old boy, and, or I'd get me a, uh, like a Pizio operated lighter, like the Savinelli uh, IM Corona pipe, pipe, uh, pipe lighters, you know, like uh, you guys have seen. Uh, to me, uh, they, I, if you're a pipe smoker, if you want uh, one of the best I am Corona built pipe lighters and you like PZO for simplicity, uh, the, the pipe, the pipe uh, lighter branded Savinelli pipe lighter, which I got here. Okay. Are excellent lighters. I got more than one of these. I got a parse lighter and I got two and I got one I'm selling. I don't collect lighters. All right, guys, I do buy them and fix them, but I don't collect them. Uh, but I always keep one around uh, for myself. All right, let's get this out of the way. Now, this one here, I haven't had this out in a while. I don't I still think it's got, this is one I got for sale on eBay right here. This is a beautiful example of a black lacquered uh, silver plated Savinelli pipe lighter. This thing from day one, this is just an excellent lighter. So needs more gas in it. Okay guys, I was going to I take this out once in a while, and the last time I took this out and fired it up, and I even went slow. Uh, I wanted to see how many times it light before, uh, you know, it skipped a beat. And I got up to 215 consecutive lights, and I just said, forget it. All right. Now, this is, uh, this is the one I just keep for myself here. This is a silver-plated tube that, you know... These things just are just simplicity, you know. Simplicity at its best. Now I do have a uh, one of the best Flint operated lighters. Uh, as far as pipe lighters goes, that I just come across, and uh, not too long ago is the, I just did a video on I think prior to this one, is this Flaminaire F12. Now, I'm not going to fire this lighter up, and the reason is, is I filled it up and I've been uh, letting it set. Let's, let's zero that out. I've been letting it set. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 82.8 grams. All right, and I filled this up Wednesday, and this is Saturday, and it was 82.8 grams. All right, so I'm just testing, you know, letting it sit for a week and see if it uh, 
loses any gas. If it doesn't, then we're good to go. But these are excellent lighters, flint-operated lighters. And i tell you what, they this one here, uh, uh, on my video prior to this, and I think I did a comparison between this and the Savinelli, and I showed you the dimensions and whatnot of it, you know, compared side by side. But, you know, what amazed me is, is uh, I filled this up, and this thing, empty, weighs 79.4 grams. After I got done filling up, is 82.8. That's 3.4 grams of butane. The Savinelli, I think, had 2.8. So, and I, and I thought, well, why is that? Because this is shorter. I thought, okay, there's a cut inside the, of the, uh, of the, uh, I am Corona Savinelli pipe lighter that where the piezo's got to rest in, so it's taking a little bit of room in the tank. All the mechanisms on this here lighter are up above, then you got the tank below. Okay, so you got a bigger fuel tank. Uh, to me, for uh, uh, Flynn operated pipe lighters, these are kind of hard to beat. You know, the simplicity of it, too. That you you can ch uh, check out my previous video and you'll show me and I'll show you how one of these operates and whatnot. It's pretty simple. You fire it that way, and, and this thing fires up every time, and turn it off. You know, there's no springs or anything in there, you know, to get in the way, and it, it, it just works. It just works. But anyway, uh, um, that's just a little thought. Now the Zama lighters that. I've been rebuilding. They're uh, a, a, what I would call uh, a, they're a good quality lighter. I mean, good Japanese engineering. And what I like about it too, if you ever take one apart, the ones I've been selling, you'll see that the it's got a big. Uh, I think it's maybe a two millimeter by a millimeter and a half stopper somewhere around there, and the design of the lighter itself uh, doesn't really attribute to uh, get a lot of heat down there in that stopper. So, you know, you can let those things run five, six, seven minutes a time, probably even more, but, you know, I just don't recommend it. That way you don't have to, you know, if something don't mess up, you don't have to rebuild it. And the main thing that's going to mess up and probably you'll have to fix it is you'll probably have to take your your flint wheel out and harden it if it gets too uh, it gets too hot and takes the temper out of it but anyway that's just a few thoughts you know if you guys you know like this I got a JJ lighter here these are excellent lighters for, for as simple as they are because the only thing they have as far as uh, valve mechanism is a little seat that sits right in top of here that when you flick the lid closed it just it just puts your, like putting your finger on the valve and just stopping the gas flow. If you just want to start out repairing lighters, start out with these right here. These are simple, and then work your way up. Uh, I bought a lighter off of eBay here a while back. It's here, uh, now I don't know what they call it, Ivy St. Laurent or whatever they call it, but this thing here has been a freaking nightmare just for the simple fact that. Uh, the case was made out of plastic. PGO come through here. It had a gas valve that went up uh, through here, but it was all messed up. And it had a grounding point at the top of the case. And you can see how some of it's melted. I've been trying to, I've been trying to fix it. I'm going to fix it. It's just I've got to find the right components. I'm just waiting for I get a lighter in. I thought, hey, I'll, that'll work, you know, a part or something that'll work in manufacturing and, and uh, getting this going. I stripped this down. This used to be black. I stripped it down in some uh, MEK, take the majority of the paint off of it, and I'm going to give it a new black coat when I get it fixed and working 100%, and I'll turn around and sell it. You know, I, I think I paid like $15 for that, and it wasn't even working. But I thought, well, that's an unusual pipe lighter, you know. Had this little, you know, sticking out the top. This little sticking out the top like that, you know. So uh, I thought, hey, that's kind of unique. And it was unique, all right. Just a unique headache. 
but you know I'll get it fixed it's gonna take some time and uh, you know uh, you know I was talking about them Savinelli lighters I got one here you know I'm just still learning about these uh, if you got one of these Savinelli pipe lighters like this and it's only lighting part of the time you know but it it you know it, it only like like this one here it only lights part of the time but that's because well I'll, that's another story you know I'm still going through it let's just leave that for another time but anyway uh, it comes to durability if you had to pick between uh, a lighter for durability you know man I'll tell you guys uh, I love them done the roll gases. They're pretty and everything and they're beautiful and they got so many different designs and lacquers and finishes and stuff but to me they are they worth the money you pay for them? To me they're not. Okay? There's two, you know, and you're talking about a 1950s, late 50s, early 60s design and uh and you know there's been a lot of their lighters has been uh, model out after that and uh, caught the, they've been copied and whatnot and they're even better uh, you know some of them are even Chinese you know and uh, the quality might not be as good but the the internal operating mechanism is better okay so let's just go with that I don't just judge a lighter by by the looks of it or or uh, how it operates I judge a lighter you know don't get me wrong I appeal I'm a guy I appeal and uh, and the uh, smoothest of touch and the quality of design of the building exterior is great you know I, I definitely judge a lighter by that but for I based most of my decisions on what I feel is for long term you know, if you're going to spend money, a lot of money on lighters, folks, you just don't want to have to send it in every year because, uh, you know, these repair shops, you know, they don't work for nothing. And if you want something done, you, and, uh, you know, like I said in earlier videos, getting something done, getting something done right is two different things. And if you want it done right, you're going to pay for it. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's the first time I've worked on one of these in the last week. I got another one over here somewhere that uh, I put fuel in it, and uh, you know it doesn't shut off. The valve sticks open on it. I haven't took it apart yet, but uh, uh, I really, I really like these lighters. You know, I'll tell you what would be great if that lighter was about if they'd have made that about oh about an inch, inch and a quarter longer put like double the tank size in it where you had about almost seven grams of uh, uh, butane in it that pipe lighter would be absolutely freaking fantastic you know it, you know uh, 3.4 grams that not that's not nothing to scoff at either you know I think an old boy holds 3.3 so and uh, it's nothing to scoff at and what's really amazing about this is I think these are made in the 60s in France, I tell you what, those French boys—they knew what they was doing when uh, they made this lighter. I would even still say today this is probably one of the best flint pipe lighters out there, vintage, as far as I'm concerned, that you can get. All right, guys, that's all I got to say. If you got any comments or questions, you know, feel free to post. I mean, you know, any opinion I share here is just my own personal opinion. Uh, so uh, don't be offended by it I'm just giving you something to think about and, and uh, for those that uh, you know maybe if you want to start repairing lighters uh, I would start with something simple and um, and another quick hint too uh, once you uh, break out a uh, filler valve on lighters and you fix it or whatever you just remove it and put a new o-ring on it and you stick it back in bear in mind you're going to have air in that tank and possibly a little moisture so i had a guy that had trouble with his his flame was being really erratic and you know he worked on it and i told him to purge the tank a couple times you know fill it up with butane stick the tank upside down take the butane out okay do that a couple times 
then fill it up again then after you fill it up you always want to bleed the air pressure off of it and fill it up again just top it off and that usually starts or stops the erratic flame for those years having trouble with that because I'll tell you what I had trouble with it and I didn't know what the heck was going on I thought I didn't know what I was doing you know but turns out you know these these things are like fine-tuned machines you know they they need to be just operating just correctly and uh, tell you what if I can help you out a little bit of information save you guys a lot of headaches because I'll tell you what you know let me I let me go through the headaches and I'll help you out so you don't have to go through them but anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed this video like I said if you got any questions or if there's something maybe I can answer for you you know be, be glad to help